So something I observe is amongst my friends with PD, everyone is slightly different and they have different symptoms. And also the disease progresses at different rates in different ways. I think you call this heterogeneity, don't you? Do, do you observe the same thing in your clinical practice? Absolutely. So we've we've recognised the heterogeneity, that's the differences between people since we've first been um, studying patients with Parkinson's disease. And of course, some of it is is obvious, you know, people of different ages, different genders, you know, w- will appear um, different in terms of their symptoms. Some of it might be because there are, there are different types of Parkinson's. You know, some people have tremor, some people have no tremor. And, you know, wh- whether there is a difference in that what's going on in the brain to explain those different symptoms, um, this is of interest. Other factors which may be relevant might be, you know, how what other medical problems someone might have. So someone with diabetes, someone with hypertension, someone with liver or kidney or whatever other condition, that may impact itself, that, you know, the, the, the different symptoms they have of Parkinson's. And similarly, the, the drugs that they're exposed to for other conditions or for Parkinson's itself, that, of course, may influence how they appear to, to an onlooker. What we've learned um, recently, of course, over the last 20 years is is an increasing number of genes which increase the risk of Parkinson's disease. You know, one or two are are fairly common. The majority are quite rare. And overall, the the, the genes that that, um, explain Parkinson's, it's probably about 20% of all patients with Parkinson's have a major gene that has elevated their risk of Parkinson's. But that means there's 80% of people who don't have a a clear genetic predisposition to Parkinson's disease. And we have to think about um, the environmental contributions or perhaps gene environment interactions into the risk that they've developed. And of course, over the the lifespan of, of a person, it can be difficult to pin down, you know, which um, environmental exposures that they may have breathed in or they may have swallowed or they may have been exposed to um, you know in the environment in terms of viruses and radiation and the like and so that, that it can be very difficult to prove the hypotheses so everybody is different largely from from just looking at them but likely because of different activity in the brain that has been influenced by their, their genetic predisposition and the environmental influences they've come across across their lifespan. So do you think it's possible there are fundamentally different types of Parkinson's, like different types of diabetes or different types of cancer? Or do you think there's broadly sort of one pathology, one type of Parkinson's, but lots of small incremental factors that influence that and, and therefore it manifests itself differently in different people? I, I think it's likely that there's a, a, a common pathway which leads to death of brain cells and, of course, some um, some systems outside the brain as well. It's not just a brain disease. You know, it can affect the bowel, it can affect the skin, it can affect the blood. The common pathway which leads to neurodegeneration and by which we, we see degeneration in the dopamine pathway as an early and prominent feature, there is an o- likely an overlap between people as to why the, um, the, these, these neural pathways are affected. So it sounds like Parkinson's isn't just one small thing. It's, it's multiple things that are connected together. There's sort of a chain effect. And if any one of those links in the chain is affected by a genetic fault or an environmental factor, then then it might trigger Parkinson's or, or, or speed up the onset, or speed up the progression of Parkinson's. Yes. But I suppose that the thing that, that unifies patients with Parkinson's is that there's there are, there are symptoms which are in common. And so loss of the, the dopamine pathway from the, the nigra, nigra to the striatum, th- this leads to slowness, stiffness and tremor and responds well to dopaminergic replacement. And so that, that's why people who ha- may have a different process which is causing the nigra striatal pathway to, to deteriorate still get the same benefit from, um, from you know, the, the drugs that we use, may not exactly the same, but you know we we've we've learned which drugs um, to use and and which drugs to to turn to if we don't get the expected responses first time round. But when we're trying to develop disease modifying drugs, we need to think about the possible differences, you know, at what, the source of the problem and and how to deal with that. One very obvious difference between two groups of people is is male versus female. So. I see this amongst my friends with PD, they tend to be slightly more men, and the men are slightly younger in some cases as well. 
is that something that you observe and if so what's the reason for that so i think this is this is accurate there, there was been some um debate over the years and perhaps you know this was a, a bias in in terms of the epidemiology and, and men were just presenting to clinics more than than women would but but even in um the the best epidemiology studies there does appear to be an excess of parkinson's disease in men and what has been recognized is that there are hormonal influences on Parkinson's risk. So estrogen itself can have an impact on, on the, the, um, the dopaminergic pathway and the risk for neurodegeneration. And perhaps the loss of estrogen as, as women um, hit the menopause is, is the reason that, that um, there's a, more Parkinson's disease in, in the, the later, later life. And of course, that does open the question, you know, should we be using hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women to reduce their risk of Parkinson's disease? And that has to be weighed up in, in the balance of um, other um, arguments about the pros and cons of hormone replacement therapy for, for postmenopausal women um, in their entirety. If you're interested in finding out more about Parkinson's, subscribe for a new video every Thursday.